Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out a game called... Cube? I think it's Cube. It could be QB. But I'm not sure. Either way, I found out about this game from friend of the channel Rancid Shamble and Indie Extraordinaire. She actually showed me this one a while back and I've been meaning to cover it for ages. I just finally got around to it. I want to tell you a very quick story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, because I bought a new computer, well, I didn't actually buy one, I was gifted a new computer from a friend of the family, and I've been setting it up for the last four days or so. This is my first video since Sunday-ish, so, like, Saturday or Sunday, since the weekend, we'll say, and today is Thursday, so that's a big deal for me. It was Saturday, actually. Uh, I haven't recorded in ages, and I've been setting up these freaking codecs, man. If somebody offered me another computer right now, I'd probably turn them down, even if it was better, just because I don't want to go through that again for, like, several years at least. Uh, getting the audio levels and the video codecs set up properly sounds like it's so simple on paper, and I've done it before, but it's always a new challenge with every new computer for whatever reason, so I'm finally here. We're back. Things are okay. To you, it looks like nothing happened, but for me, I was slowly dying a little bit inside as I was watching each day go by and I wasn't able to make any new videos and uh, I got down to my last upload so uh, I am freaking cutting it close anyway let's actually take a look at QB I'm sorry for this long rambling entry uh, whatever introduction we want to call this so it's a uh, first person exploration game involves checking out some cubes uh, and trying not to fall into space and such let's look at the credits so there are credits very nice. Back. Instructions are WASD to move around, E to activate object space to jump. Fairly basic stuff. Let's start the game. Man, I've looked at this first area so many times while I've tested out my recording setup. I am so relieved to have that finally be behind me. At least I certainly hope it is. So we'll uh, check out what's going on above and below and around us, and it looks like a fairly unique environment with a lot of very neon interesting colors and some cool shader effects going on. Uh, it looks like there is an object in the center of the screen we can activate and then a like meta ultra object there which we somehow need to rotate around to get to. Uh, so let's go hit this cube and you'll notice the cube changes colors. We are now in turquoise land and we're going to be rotating again trying not to fall into space because this is actually instant death if we fall into one of these pits. Uh, so as you saw the controls super simple standard first person shooter controls. Uh, it has a bit of a floaty feeling to it as you move around which I'm not super huge fan of. I like a little bit more of a tactile response when you drop uh, your finger off that W key. I don't want to slide very much especially when we have to not fall to our deaths endlessly and, uh, and normally that is usually what we find, but with this game it seems to be a little different. I'll get used to it, it's not the end of the world, but just wanted to note that. And the uh, controls are a bit on the sensitive side. We actually do have an options menu uh, with some basic stuff here. We've got mouse sensitivity, field of view, and audio volume. Uh, these are nice things to have. I'm actually going to turn this down just a smidge. Uh, see if that helps the feeling. Actually, I think that was a little, a little bit better. Alright, so we're rotating again. We're now in some sort of spring green neon land. Just let gravity take effect and pull me down a little bit, uh, which we will then be presented with another... Well, I don't know if this is a challenge. The other ones weren't a challenge. This one may be the first of a slight challenge, because we have to do a little bit of first-person platforming. Uh, and when you haven't jumped around a lot from this perspective with this particular control set uh, and this slidey movement style, it might seem a little bit foreign to you to make that jump at first. I'm going to try and jump this preemptively so I don't end up getting kicked off. I'll let that finish its rotation. It's a pretty cool premise. I mean, I quite like this uh, environment and this very neon color scheme that they're going with. Looks lovely. I think it plays uh, maybe not as well as I'd hope, but it actually makes up for it in premise. Uh, where are we rotating? I need to jump down here, and hopefully when the wall flips, I don't get kicked off, and it didn't do that, thankfully. All right, so red cube is the end, maybe, of this cube. I think that's probably going to kick me up into the center, hopefully. Of course, can't not make the reference to actually the movie cube. Uh, oh, we got little platforms to jump up here. I wasn't expecting that. Although this has very little to do with the movie cube, uh, there is a very loose correlation, I suppose, with the uh, modular element to the rooms. 
the fact that they're set up somewhat like puzzles and involves a little bit of thinking outside of the... I'm not going to say it. Alright, so what are we going to do now? We're going to flip all the way upside down. This is going to be a problem for me. Alright, uh, where are we going? Oh, okay, I lived. That's pretty rare, actually. I've, uh, I've done this introduction sequence a number of times while I've been testing out my recording setup, and so far I haven't gotten this far because I just keep falling off all the edges. Uh, and I should remind you, or actually not remind you because I haven't told you yet, but I should let you know that if I fall off, that is uh, basically permadeath as far as I'm aware. I am going to be kicked back to the beginning, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you guys are gonna get frustrated and not watch my channel and stuff. I don't want that to happen. So let's go up here. A little bit more hoppy, skippy. All right, all right, all right. I think we're okay. And there we go. I think we made it. We're gonna make it to the the center. It looks like antechamber a little bit too, which is kind of cool. Anything that looks like antechamber pretty much has my blessing. I'm gonna try and I guess kick myself through this. Oh, level complete. Continue. I wasn't expecting this tiny little menu to pop up when I did that. I figured there'd be some sort of a graphic. Oh, this is not what I expected to happen at all. I figured we'd be going to one of the other cubes that you could see out the pseudo window. Um, still not too happy about the slidey controls. I wish that was not the case. I mean, I can tell I'm supposed to be going over there. I just want to take a look at what's going on around us first. Things are not always as they seem. What's going on up here? There's a lot of sliding... Moving around going on. I think this could be kind of interesting. I think we're supposed to actually flip the world and get up onto some of those blocks. So let's start that process. I wonder if I could see this cube from the first cube. Because I don't remember any, like, loosely formed clusters of blocks floating in space. I think they were mostly like that one you can see slightly off by the horizon there. Well, it's not the horizon, but you know what I mean. Now let's hit that button and flip. I guess we're going to be dropped down here. It's a, an interesting challenge from a level design perspective to come up with a way to move these things around so they actually make sense from each angle and then you don't just basically hit that button and then immediately are ejected off into space although maybe that's what we want later on uh, for an extra challenge and when I said I was kicked out to the beginning if I fall off the world I assume that just means I would be kicked off to the beginning of each level not to the beginning of the game this is not a roguelike like as far as I know, and I know we've been playing some games with that definition lately. Um, I'm using it in a pretty loose sense, and I know that hopefully you guys are picking up on that. Uh, but I know there have been some criticisms of that as well. So I found another cube here. A cube inside a cube inside a cube. Dog. Alright, so we're going to flip around. Where's that going to put us, though? Looks like we might have to do some navigating. Maybe we get to go through this insane gear structure, which is actually clipping into itself a little bit. Uh, these rotation animations could use maybe a little bit of polish, though, unfortunately. I mean, I'm not trying to be overly critical here. This game is free, so it's not like I can be too angry, but... Uh, they do jitter a bit, is all I'm trying to say. I think I'm supposed to fall down there. Kind of hard to say for sure, but I'm going to trust my instincts and let re go of regret... Gotta bet on myself now, because that's my best bet. Oh no! Okay, barely made that jump. Barely. Let's... Can I... I can't make it into that. I'm supposed to come down from there, aren't I? I don't even understand the perspective of what I'm looking at there. Maybe I'm supposed to keep going down? Well, I can't go back up now. It's too late for me there. Did I just break the game? Oh god, I just fell off. What have I done? What is even that? What is... What is that? There's like race cars on the walls. I don't like it. Let's go over here. I don't know what to do about this. Oh, there's a cube over there. Okay, maybe I was supposed to get down here by accident. I'm pretty sure I can cube run my way over there. That's what I'm calling this process of running along these cubes. I'm calling it cube running because I needed a term for that apparently. Pardon my somewhat wacky demeanor right now, I'm just, I was having such a bad time with these codecs that I'm just relieved to actually be playing a game, and I guess it's showing in my mental state or something. So let's hit this button. Oh god, where I, I need to... Oh, this is not gonna work. I'm never gonna be able to get around this... Oh, wait, wait a minute, I lived. I should probably not have been able to do that. I'm pretty sure I should have fallen off there, but it gave me credit for it anyway. 
So I guess the game wanted to be super nice. It's pretty strange to do the level design like this. It's so loose feeling, like I'm not sure if I'm even going in the right direction most of the time. But I guess the reward is that I just get to keep playing. This could be a problem, because I can't really see very well where I'm supposed to be. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I fell. That is a shame, guys and gals. Let's try again. I'll do a couple of runs on this, because I don't want this episode to be super short. But I also don't want it to be ultra long, either. I want to find a nice happy medium. Uh, I know it's come up a few times. People say, hey, Rockley Smile, why aren't you playing the entire game when you're so close to the end occasionally? Uh, sometimes it's because I just don't want to spoil the ending. That's usually the, the reason. Uh, sometimes it's because I just need to stop for various reasons. Maybe I'm running out of memory in fraps, or things have gotten choppy or strange. Or the video is just running extremely long. Regardless, I always have some sort of a reasoning behind when I choose to end each episode. I don't tend to do it that arbitrarily, uh, but I don't think it was a big deal. All right, so what do I... Can I cheat this in any way? I kind of want to... No, I don't... I can't do that. It's quite a sight to behold, all these blocks smashing into each other going up that wall there. All right, let's find that cube and start getting to rotating things again. Should mention the ambient sound. There's a little bit of a like an airy drone going on in the background. It's probably a bit hard to hear. Although I have the sound levels turned up a bit higher than I normally do for these, uh, it might still be a little bit hard to make out exactly what you're hearing. Whoa. Okay. Well, I've clipped through the floor and the wall, and that would be a bug. I always tend to find those in these episodes. I'm not sure what that's about. All right. Well, thankfully we were not very far in on that one, so let's try that again. Try not to uh, get so in the walls business, so to speak. Or maybe the world is falling apart and I should really just not push my luck. I should wait until the rotation completes. That's kind of a bad thing, unfortunately. Uh, if your game's main gimmick, and I'm not saying gimmick to be demeaning or anything, but like if the main emphasis or gameplay convention point uh, is that there is rotation and it's a huge element of the game world, you should probably not be very easily able to fall through the floors and ceilings and walls. Uh, granted, I know it's probably not a very simple fix. There's probably some weird collision geometry stuff going on behind the scenes that might be, you know, very difficult to exactly figure out why an instance of that bug comes up. But if it's possible to give that more attention, I would say that would be a high priority on the bug checklist, if there is one. I, I presume this game is finished as far as it's going, so I'm not really making a criticism that you should go back and now fix it. It's probably too late for that, but I'm just saying, from my perspective, as someone who's just come into this game relatively cold, I would say that would be a thing for me. Uh, where did this cube go? I already lost it. I'm not even sure where I am. It's a lot of similar blue neon everywhere. I do still really like this aesthetic, though. I'm not upset about that at all. I quite like looking around here, and I think the fact that there are some dynamic things going on, some animations, some, like, far-off-in-the-distance stuff, I think that makes it a lot more interesting to look at. I have to say, though, these stars are probably the least interesting things going on on the screen. They just sort of look like weird square confetti bits floating off far away. I mean, who's... Maybe they're not even supposed to be stars. Maybe they're just supposed to be more cubes floating around. That actually would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? Anyway, press that cube. I've noticed a lot of times when I try to trigger those, uh, they don't always activate. You have to hit E like two or three times before it picks up on it. Again, probably just a silly collision thing, but it is a little bit frustrating. Or at least, well, not frustrating, but it like it leads the feeling of the tactile response of the game to feel a little bit cheap. Uh, it's probably just a Unity thing, and it's really not a big deal, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm critiquing stuff, because that's what I do. Oh, that was a terrible jump. Alright, what do you say? We'll do one more time, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, I read there are four levels to this, which, granted, I thought at first was going to be a silly amount of game to actually get to play. I could probably cheat this and jump up onto a higher block if I wanted. I'm not doing it, though for integrity's sake. But yeah, I mean, four levels probably have been not a very long game. 
but as it turns out, I think it's probably going to be just right. I keep going over here. Is this even where... Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm sort of getting trained on what to do, even though I'm not actively thinking about it, which is usually a good mark of gameplay design. Usually. Depends on what the game is. I mean, if we're talking about Guitar Hero, then absolutely. But if we're talking about an RPG, then it might actually be a signal to too much repetition. Okay, so what do I need to do at this point? This is the part where I think I hit a snag and then accidentally fell to the bottom and had to recover my blood stain, so to speak. Alright, that's not what I want to do, though. Uh, we'll just do that, then, I guess. I can fit under here, that's good. Whoa, whoa, I can't stand on those. That's real bad. I just realized the game is called Cube, like QB, but I think it could get mistaken for, like, quarterback a lot. So, you know, as far as, like, SEO optimization, that's probably not the best idea for a name. Uh, not being too mean to the name, I mean, per se, it's not a terrible name, but, like, in terms of getting people to find your game, you do want to think about that kind of stuff generally, like, if there are other words or meanings or, you know, phrases that get thrown around that share common ground with what you've chosen. And in this case, I think there are a lot more people talking about quarterbacks than there are cube-based games. I don't know how I was supposed to survive this. I think I just got really lucky. Oh, I didn't do it this time, though. Alright, well, I think you get the idea. It's a pretty cool game. I do recommend it, despite some shortcomings. I'm not saying that they're that bad, though. I mean, a lot of this stuff is... They're, they're niggling issues. They're not a big deal. Uh, they just so If this was a game that went to Greenlight or something someday, I would hopefully, hopefully want to see those things corrected. But as it stands, it's a free game. Link's going to be in the description. Go grab it. And just, you know, get a half an hour of fun out of it. Uh, especially if you're into the aesthetic like I am. It's uh, quite cool to look at, and it's a fun little world to explore. And it's definitely something a little bit different. Although I am a little partial to these first-person exploration slash puzzle games. They almost always uh, come across more interesting to me than I think some others do. But I don't know. I, I have these discussions occasionally with people, and they're like, yeah, well, first-person puzzle platforming, it's been done. I don't know. It seems like a lot of untreaded ground for me that I would still like to see more exploration on. I mean, there's so many first-person shooters, why not do a little bit of puzzle platforming as well? I mean, puzzle platformers really got to be a thing for, like, the 2D realm, but I think 3D is still kind of searching for good ground to cover, and I think we're starting to get there little by little. So, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I hope you visit my website, as always, which is indie-impressions.com, so you can check out all the old and new videos in the series. You can sort them by distribution method by platform. If you have a special indie dev in mind, you can even type their name into the search box, and if I've covered any of their vids or any of their games, rather, in my vids, they will show up on my website. And if you ever are wondering, did he cover this game on Indie Impressions? That's the quickest way to check. If you don't feel like dealing with YouTube, you can always just type in the name of the game you're wondering about right into that search box on the site, and any videos related to or exactly matching that will pop up right there and then. Uh, so that does try to make it convenient for you. There's also some forums over there, so I'd be uh, much obliged if you feel like coming by and having a little chat with me. Maybe, you know, some of the other fans of the show, other viewers, have some interesting perspectives on each of these games that I've been covering. And, you know, we're getting very, very close to the year mark. I was supposed to be well into editing a pretty serious, like, anniversary video, and I still haven't even started it yet, unfortunately, because of this whole computer issue. I'm going to try and get to that real soon. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of things going on, so I, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Just wanted to mention that. So aside from the website, though, facebook.com slash Indie Impressions, if you want to stop by there, leave a like on it. That is up to you, but it helps me out greatly and lets you know anything that's new about the show. If I do any news updates or contests, they will appear over there, uh, as well as you'll get each day's video delivered into your Facebook feed. If you care about that, I promise I won't spam your feed, though. I rarely upload more than one thing a day or post one thing a day to that particular service. Sometimes I post two or three things, but it's usually on special events or live stream events or something like that. Uh, aside from Facebook, though, I also have a Twitter handle, which is at Rockley Smile, so if you want to come visit me over there, uh, that's probably where I spend the most of my time on social media. I do a lot of tweeting. There's a lot of fun times to be had. I get a little wacky over there sometimes, but that's just the nature of the beast with Twitter. It's a, it's a snarky contest. It's whoever can be the most snarky in 140 characters or less 
wins the Twitter prize, which is hundreds and hundreds of followers, I suppose. I don't know what the Twitter prize is, but it seems like a fun time to me anyway. Uh, so I would like it if you'd stop by and visit. Uh, what else is there to say, really, other than if you're an indie dev and you feel like getting in contact with me, feel free to send me a tweet or an email at the contact form on the website. You know, the tweeting happens on Twitter, the email happens on the website. I didn't really make that very clear, but I think you understand what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, so I look forward to hearing from you. I take recommendations for games. If you want to stop by and just say hey or chat, that is totally up to you. Uh, this has been an e extremely elaborate outro, so I will leave us at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you come back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game, and I hope you have a lovely night. See you later.